So today we're back onto the uh, the Keysight uh, DCAX, um, and uh, what I wanted to show today is its capabilities as a spectrum analyzer. So obviously uh, we can use it as an oscilloscope. Oops, sorry here, grab the wrong knob. Uh, we can use it as an oscilloscope, and you can see here we're looking at a particular waveform. So what is this waveform? Well, I have this little board here. Uh, this is a MAX uh, 2870. It goes up to 6 gigahertz. Um, and right now I have it set at uh, four, 4 gigahertz, okay? And so uh, this, is the, uh, this is the waveform that we're getting out at 4 at uh, four gigahertz. And then, of course, um, you can go into the math functions. And the math functions, we have all kinds of stuff. Uh, add, subtract, align, thin, common, amplify, average, square root, all, all, these are all MATLAB operations, actually. Uh, we can uh, simulate uh, random noise and stuff. Uh, we can do signal processing, we can add a filter, uh, we can do all kinds of cool statistics things. Then in the, at the end here we have transformations, uh, which includes an FFT. So you take the FFT box and you drag it down here, and uh, then uh, right now you can say what units you want, dB volts, and I have the FFT window set to uh, Hanning. Um, and then uh, once you get that all set up here, then you can go to this tab, and this is the uh, FFT of the waveform, and if we get some more, more samples in there, uh, it starts looking, it looks better. So that's the same as an FFT on any other oscilloscope. Uh, the, more, uh, the more waveforms you have, the better the mathematics. Um, and you get a better looking a better looking FFT. So let's go ahead and change my box here to five uh, five and let's do a clear display. Okay, so you notice that it's not working right. All right, so it worked good at four. Let's go back to four. And why do we get a good uh, FFT at four, but not at five. That has to do with triggering. So um, a couple of people pointed out that um, if you're triggering uh, on the same uh, signal as the input, you're going to have jitter on on the uh, on the thing. You don't have a solid a solid edge necessarily. Like any oscilloscope, there's going to be jitter jitter on your trigger signal. Now, this machine here has all kinds of different modes for uh, triggering. Uh, let me turn this off for a second. So you can do a filtered edge from DC to 100 megahertz. Uh, so it has an internal filter. It only looks at frequencies in that range. Um, you can do a standard edge here, which is good from DC to 3.3 gigahertz. So it's just a different filter. And then you can do a clock divide. So it, this, this can trigger up to a 32 gigahertz signal here. Um, and then there's this thing called pattern lock uh, up at the top here. And if you click on pattern lock, it's going to do kind of a poor man's clock recovery. Now, if you want to use this device in true uh, communications uh, circuits and stuff, you really need to have a good clock. You can buy a plugin for this instrument that is a clock recovery plugin. Um, there's also an external uh, box that does clock recovery if you don't have your own. Um, a lot of the circuits you'll have your own clock and you can just use that. But if you're receiving a signal that doesn't have an, a, a, a separate clock, you can do clock recovery. Like I say, you can do it with a plug-in or you can do it with an external box. Or you can do it with this strange thing. You can do a pattern lock. And then you can say auto detect. So it's going to look at the pattern you have. Okay, let me move it back to, um, let me move it back to five gigahertz. And right now, uh, right here, you can see it says bit rate is four gigahertz, pattern length one. So if we do auto detect, it's gonna take a look at the incoming signal, all right? And it's gonna look around and says, ah, I found a signal at five gigahertz. 
that only has one pattern length with basically it's ones and zeros, ones and zeros, ones and zeros. If it had a different length and stuff, you could do more things, uh, but this has a pattern length of one. Um, so if I do that and I come back down here to the um, spectrum analyzer, you see now that we're right at five gigahertz and all of the harmonics here up to 50 gigahertz. So it's a 50 gigahertz uh, FFT uh, spectrum analyzer. Um, that's that's a pretty nice thing this instrument has. Uh, FFT is up to 50 gigahertz um, and that will come in handy. So you can see here we've got this uh, strange harmonics here. We have some second, we have some third, and then we have a bunch of other things. And that's because our waveform, remember our waveform uh, looked a bit goofy. Let's, uh, let's make it the right size here. There we go. Um, so it's not exactly a sine wave. It's got a, a little bit of distortion to it. I know it's kind of hard to see here. Um, but it does have some distortion to it. And um, it's, it's leaning a little bit to the right. Uh, it's not a symmetric waveform. This, this top peak is leaning a little bit to the right from, from the looking at the bottom ones here. Anyway, so it has distortion. And then we get, we get this type of FFT. So if you, uh, I'll show you a couple other things. If you go to math, you change from Hanning to no FFT window. Um, it's okay too. Um, so let's see, what else can I show? Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to do for this video. Just show you, the, show you the FFT capabilities as well and all of the math functions as well. These high-end instruments from Keysight actually have MATLAB inside of them. And so anything MATLAB can do, these things can do. In fact, there's, there's a, a ways to, uh, to, to get to MATLAB tools as well. I don't know if you have to pay for those. You might have to, but um, you can do other things uh, with the MATLAB function. Uh, there is a MATLAB resource uh, here, and you can read about the things that uh, the uh, the oscilloscope can do with uh, with the MATLAB things. I haven't read that yet. I, I need to figure this out more. The instrument's very new to me. Uh, it says here, request your MATLAB trial. Yeah, I probably have to pay for this, so I might not have access to it. Um, I do have a MATLAB license, but I don't think I can move it over to this instrument. Um, and there is MSIDOG. All right. Um, yeah, anyway, that's the video for the day.